Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the next video of our lab four, where we are discussing the ACP and the CP ports and the comparison between them in terms of the execution time for 8.FFT. So in order to further improve the ACP performance, uh, we can enable the cache coherent access on the ACP. So till our previous um, uh, design, all the accesses from the ACP or HP are going to the system memory. So even if you have the data store into the cache memory, since we have not enabled the cache coherent access on the ACP, the data needs to be flushed to the system memory before the ACP port can be accessed. Now to allow the ACP port to access the cache memory, we need to do certain settings in the block diagram. So when you configure the ACP port in the zinc IP, you need to make sure that you select the corresponding cache coherent access. So in the ACP port, if you see, there are two set settings. One is that you need to enable the port. And the second is that you need to enable the AXI user signal to high, enabling the cache coherency when allowed by the AX cache sig signal inside the ACP port, okay? So this is again, uh, these are the signals which are uh, there in the AXI protocol to support the cache coherent access. Now in our previous videos or previous designs, we have not selected this uh, one. And because of that, we need to do the cache coherent. We need to do the data uh, cache flushing and the cache invalid operation. Now what I have done, I have enabled this signal. I have regenerated the bit stream. And after the regenerated the bit stream, I'll go to the SDK and I'll run the code. Now in the code, uh, running the code, what I have done is that I have in the uh, FFTPS versus SAP function, I have now removed the cache flush option as well as cache uh, invalidate option. So I have disabled it. And also to make sure that our data output of the uh, uh, PS uh, as well as PL SAP is correct, I have added this code to check the correctness. And if there is an issue in the data, I have printed it here okay so this is validated the correctness of the scp port without the cache invalidate and the flush function on the other hand in the hp port i have enabled the cache flush and then invalid function so that uh, we will understand the difference between them so i'll run this code uh, now and i'll we will can see the execution time between the two ports so I'll run it using my remote hardware. So our aim is to see whether there is a significant difference in the execution time of the ACP and HP port and whether the correctness in the functionality on the ACP and HP port. So I'll start my JTAG terminal and in the JTAG terminal, I'll run the code. So now you can see that uh, all the iterations has been run correctly. So you can see that in the ACP port, we don't need the uh, we don't need the access to the we don't need a cache flush or the cache invalid, and still the data is functionally correct. And you can see that in case of the HP port, the execution time is around 5.41, which we are getting in the last time. Right now it is 5.42. While in the ACP port, it has reduced to 5.15. From 5.35, 5.35, it has been reduced to 5.15. So we get 0.2 microsecond improvement in the performance for small 8.50. For a larger size of 50, we'll get significant improvement in performance. Now what I'll do is that I'll uh, disable the cache flush and the uh, invalid function in the HP port as well. So let's see what happens in that case. So in the HP function, I'll disable it like we did in the case of the, uh, the ACP port. So then I'll run it again. And then 
ideally what should happen? There should be the error in the HP port function. SAP should work fine. So I'll run this code on my remote hardware. Okay, so this is uh, being run here. So I'll run it now. And now you can see that the SAP is around 5.414. HP has reduced it significantly because we have removed those functions, but you can see that there is an error in every case. So though HP has run faster, but you can see that in every case, there is a data mismatch has happened because we have not done the cache invalidate and the cache flush operation, okay? So that's why for the, that's why ACP is called as the accelerator coherency port because it can access the coherent data via snoop control unit as we discussed in our theory lectures. But HP port cannot access the coherent data. So for that, we need to add the invalidate and the flush function inside the HP port, okay? Without that functionality will not be correct. Now there was a question on the why we need, what is the meaning of this cache uh, flush and the cache invalidate range function. So as we know that uh, in the embedded system, we have the memory subsystem and it has been divided into the multiple hierarchical memory. So memories are one th are the slow units and also they are expensive. If you want to make it faster, those memories are much expensive. So in the embedded system, you have the uh, cache memory and you have the different levels of cache memory. So you have the L1 cache memory, you have the L2 cache memory and so on. So usually the L1, L2 cache memories are slightly faster than the system memory or the external memory but they are expensive, so they are in small in size. So you can store only the small amount of data in the L1 or the L2 cache memory. Now, the task of the memory management unit or memory controller inside the embedded system is to make sure that the data which is needed by the processor in the near future is available in the cache memory. So that processor doesn't need to fetch the data from the main memory. And here, uh, so since the cache memory is smaller, so when you want to face the new net data, you need to make sure that there is a sufficient space in the cache memory. Or if it is not there, you need to move some data which is not needed in the cache memory to the main memory. Okay, so for that, this cache flush and the invalid operations are needed. Okay, so let's discuss this using the, uh, some uh, demonstration. So for example, assume that the, uh, we have the, uh, this is the cache memory, it is in smaller in size. And in the cache memory, it is divided into the multiple blocks of data. And each block of data, the size, you can call it as a cache line, which is of the particular size. While you have this, so I'll write it as a cache memory. And then you have the system memory, which is a big memory. And for the sim simplicity of understanding, we divide this into the multiple blocks of data. And each block of data, the, uh, the size is same as the cache line. So whenever the data is moved between the cache memory and uh, main memory, so I can call it as a system memory, the data movement, happens in terms of the cache line. So always a block of data, which is equivalent to the size of the cache line are moved between the cache and the system memory. For example, suppose that the, uh, the cache, suppose that the one first condition we assume that the cache is full. That means all the cache lines in the cache memory has the certain data and processor needs some data 
from main memory. So in this case, what will happen? The cache is full, but the data required by the processor. So assume that the, this is the data. Um, the data is suppose that the, this is a small amount of data which is required by the uh, processor. Okay. So this is the small amount of data required by the processor. So I can say that this is the data required by processor. Okay. And this is a cache line. Is, uh, uh, is in the main memory. So that means we need to fetch this entire cache line to the uh, main cache. So in this case, what we need to do? Uh, basically, we need to uh, remove at least one uh, cache line from cache back to and send back to memory. So then you will have the algorithm like which is the recently used or which is the least recently used. You will pick up that cache line, say this is the cache line you have picked up. You will copy this in the main memory before you put up this data in the, uh, in the you, you, then you can bring this cache line here. So here you can make use of the cache flush function. In the cache flush function, what you do, you, uh, you can send the range of address or particular set of variable. Uh, those uh, uh, cache line containing those variables will be flushed to the system memory. That means those data will be captured into the system memory. And then that means uh, the processor can make use of those cache line to store some other data. Then what is the difference between the cache flush and the cache invalidate? Now in the cache invalidate, uh, we will see later, but to just to give the understanding in the cache invalidate, you don't need to store the data back to the system memory. For example, you have recently copied the data from the system memory and you have not updated the data or modified the data then there is no need of spending the time on writing the data back to the system memory. In that case, you can use the cache invalid. That means the data inside the cache, uh, corresponding data inside the cache will be completely eliminated. That means it is assumed that the that corresponding cache line is empty. Okay, so it is a bit risky function because when you make a cache invalidate and suppose you did it for the particular set of data, suppose you did the cache invalidate for this set of variable, the entire cache line gets um, invalidated. So if your other data, which is the important data is present here, that also get uh, invalidated. That means that data is lost. So that is a some, somewhat uh, risky function, but you can use it uh, with certain carefulness. But you can uh, always uh, uh, avoid the cache invalidate and take the perform the same task using a cache flush. Basically, you but you need to take care of ordering or where you should put the cache flush function in your C code. So you can take the homework like in our FFT code. We have used the cache flush and can invalidate. We have used the cache flush for the FFT input and cache invalidate for the FFT output from the PL. So can you make use of the cache flush for the FFT output as well? So this is your homework and you can try it out. Do you need to decide where to put the cache flush operation for the FFT output so that your functionality is also correct. Now going back to the function, you can see that you can look at this function uh, in the corresponding uh, drivers and you can see that the details are already given what, how this function is implemented and what is this function is, okay? So uh, before cache invalidate, we will go to the cache flush because it is slightly easier to understand. So in the cache flush function, you can see that there is a cache flush range, cache flush line, and you have the entire cache flush. So you have the different, so it can flush the entire cache. Here you flush the particular data uh, ca uh, cache line. So if the byte specified by the address, is called by the data cache. The cache line containing that byte is invalidated. If the cache line is modified, that means the data is uh, in the cache is not same as the system memory. 
then the entire content of the cache line are returned to the system memory before the line is invalidated. Okay, once you have written the data back to the system memory, you can uh, make it as invalidated so that any other data can be used. This is the additional function cache flush range. It flushes the data cache for the given address range, not just a line, it can be more than one cache line as well. If the bytes specified by the address range are cached by the data cache, uh, cache, the cache line containing those bytes are invalidated, okay, entire cache line. So it can be more than one cache line as well. If the cache lines are modified, then the return, uh, are, uh, the, they are returned to the system memory. So you can see that class uh, flush line is uh, the uh, similar to the cache flush line, only the cache flush line can do the task for the multiple crash line as well. Okay, so similarly, you will see that there is a certain for the uh, uh, cache uh, instruction cache also, there will be certain kind of functions are there. So this is another function, which is the decache store line. So in this case, you can see that here it is also same as the flush line, but it is making sure that the data which is there in the cache is not uh, invalidated, right? You write the data, if the data has been modified, you write the data back to the system memory, but data also remains in the main memory. Okay, so that is the cache uh, store function. So you can have a look at this uh, different function. Now we'll go to the cache invalidate function, which is slightly uh, bigger one. So you can see that the cache invalid function, it invalidates the data caches for the given address line. So if the data bytes specified by the address lines are cached by the data cache, the cache line containing those bytes are invalidated. If the cache lines are modified, the modified contents are lost and not returned to the system memory before the lines are invalidated. So this is the uh, very, uh, uh, strong function that means it may possible that the your data in other data in that cache line may get may get lost if you don't use this function carefully you can have a look at this function the corresponding details in more uh, corresponding things in more detail if you want to know more about this and again for this invalidate one uh, you can see that there is an invalidate line for a particular line of this one and the entire cache invalidate functions are there. So these are the very important function, memory functions, uh, cache functions for the embedded system. And you should make yourself comfortable with this function and use it in your code.